All right, cool. We are recording. Thank you guys for joining us, everybody that's in here. I feel like I recognize like almost every name on this little attendance list. So thank you guys for hopping into our 17th ever knowledge drop. It's pretty cool that we're like deep in the double digits with these. Um, and if you haven't been here before, I think most of you guys hopefully have been, but um, if this is your first knowledge drop, basically to run you through how this works, we'll spend the first half of the time with Grace going through her deck, her dropping all of her immense wisdom on us, and then hopefully we'll have some time at the end to do some question and answer. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Grace and I did a dry run last week, and it's very like, it's like a, yeah, it's like a world I didn't know much about or think much about, and I was like, oh, this is like really fascinating and like affects me also. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys are excited, and thanks for being here, Grace. Thanks for doing this, and I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm gonna share my screen just to make sure it's all working. All right, can you guys, can you see my screen? See your screen? Can you go present mode? All right. Yes, I was gonna try and do it here and see, make sure that still works. Perfect. All right, can you still see it? Yes, we are in there. Yay, okay. Sweet, all right, I will kick it off. So as Travis said, my name is Grace. I am part of Balboa. Um, shout out to the babes that are here. Um, I'm from California originally. I'm currently in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, we go to Cordoba on Saturday. We're in our seventh month, so we're in our second half, which is exciting. Um, but I'm here today to talk to you guys about storytelling. Um, so the three things that I want you to take away are why storytelling is crucial to your success, um, three rules to guide your story, and then a recipe for success. Um, I'm dropping it because I'm the marketing manager for the company that I work for. Uh, I'm also the product representative, so not only do I help create the stories, but I tell them at conferences and webinars and things like that. And for some reason, um, storytelling is what kind of resonates with me the most as far as marketing is concerned. So I consider myself a passionate storyteller as like my hobby. So let's kick it off. All right. So in case you haven't noticed, we live in an age of digital marketing. It used to be that people would get their information from mail flyers, TV commercials, word of mouth. Um, even 10 years ago, people would maybe only visit one or two websites before making a decision on a product or a service, but the internet has exploded. Um, it's the reason we're all here right now. We wouldn't be doing a webinar like this without the internet. None of us would have digital nomad jobs if we didn't have the internet. So it's present in all of our lives. And time spent online has more than doubled in the past decade. One of the big shifts that we see because of this is the wealth of information available to the customer. They do in-depth research on not just you, but your competitors, and not everyone can be on the first page of that Google search, and let's be honest, how many times do we really go to the second page of the Google? Um, so but search engine optimization is really only one part of a marketing strategy. There's many things I could talk about, um, everything from personas to analytics, you know, digital marketing is a huge umbrella, but one thing that rings true is content is king, and content requires a story. So customers and partners are not just evaluating their product, your products and services. They're also maybe subconsciously evaluating your ability to tell that story because they want something that they can relate to. They want something that resonates with them. So you should keep your story in mind every step of the way, um, not just for the marketing team. It's too important. Marketing and storytelling is too important to be left just to the marketing team. The techies should be telling the story, the support staff, and most importantly, the leaders. Great storytellers have an unfair competitive advantage. They're going to recruit better. They'll be darlings in the press. They're gonna raise money more easily and at higher prices. They're gonna close amazing business developer partnerships. And they're gonna have a strong, cohesive corporate culture. Perhaps more to the point, they are more likely to deliver a positive investment return. This was said by Bill Gurley, one of the active partners at Benchmark. Um, like I said, it's, it's too important to just be led to the marketeers. Everyone should be telling the story. So. How do you become a winner in this age of digital marketing? I'm gonna give you three rules. And keep in mind that the rules are more than what you would call guidelines as opposed to actual rules. So they can be adapted to your needs. All right, rule number one, Nicholas Cage, I'm sorry, the customer is the center of the universe. So the customer is why we do anything. The customer is why we've created this product or service and they should always be the center of everything you do, especially the story. The person who I think did this the best is Stephanie Meyer, because not only do they want to hear the good story, they want to be the star of it. So she, when she was writing her books, when she was writing the Twilight novels, if you've read them, you'll notice that she goes into 
excruciating detail describing the vampires. I stared because their faces, so different, so similar, were all devastatingly and humanly beautiful. It was hard to decide who was the most beautiful. I guess that excruciating detail. But when she describes Bella, the main protagonist of the series, she says she left out a detailed description of Bella in the book so that the reader could more easily step into her shoes. She stresses that Bella's looks are open to interpretation. If you've read the books, really all that you get about Bella is that she's plain and that she's clumsy. So she's every 13-year-old girl that's ever existed. She does this on purpose so that any person can step into Bella's shoes and be, be her. They can be the star of the story. They can you know, experience this sexy vampire and the sexy werewolf falling in love and fighting over her. She really took it very seriously when she made the customer the star of her story. The reader, the customer, is the center of her universe. Keep that in mind when you're telling your stories as well. Rule number two, start with why. So this is taken from a TED Talk by Simon Sinek called How, leaders, How Great Leaders Inspire Action. Um, I'm going to adapt some of what he said. Uh, I definitely highly recommend you watch the video for yourself. There's a lot more information than I give you here. But he starts off by saying, why is Apple so successful? They have access to the same talent, the same tech, the same media, the same consultants. Same for Martin Luther King Jr. Why was he the face of the civil rights movement? He wasn't the only man who suffered. He wasn't the only great orator of the day. But one thing that them and some other people have in common, and what Simon discovered, is that they think, act, and communicate in the same way and it tends to be different from everyone else. So he created what he calls the golden circle. He says that everyone knows what they do, that outer ring in the circle. Pretty much everyone can tell you what they do. Some people know how they do it. This is like your unique value proposition. Sometimes this can be a little bit more elusive. But most people don't know why they do it. And we're not talking about the paycheck, we're talking about the purpose, the purpose for that company, purpose for that product or service. If you ask somebody about their job or their company, most people will go from the easiest to the hardest. So they'll start with what and then how, and then maybe rarely hit why. So, oops. so if Apple was like everyone else, they would probably say something like, we make great computers. They are beautiful, easy to use, and user-friendly. Wanna buy one? Nah, it's pretty, pretty uninspiring, but that's how most people communicate, and that's how most companies do marketing. Now let's try what Apple actually says. They usually start off with something like, everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo, thinking outside the box, and pushing boundaries. We apply this philosophy to designing beautiful, easy to use products, and they just happen to be great computers. It's totally different, because people don't care what you do, they care why you do it. People don't care what you do, they care why you do it. And you don't just buy computers from Apple anymore, we buy MP3 players, we buy phones, we buy those little, little TV boxes. Other companies are perfectly qualified to make those things, but like, can you imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell? Like who would buy an MP3 player from a computer company? Well, we do every day because we trust Apple, what, they, what Apple is all about. They believe the same things that we believe. I push the boundaries too, they get me. People wanna buy, you wanna buy from companies and people who believe the same things you do. So keep that in mind when you're doing your messaging. Well, number three, know the difference between features and benefits. Features are what your product is. Benefits are what you can do with our product. So after you've established that why, this is how you structure the how and the what. People don't want to buy a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. Let's look at Apple again because they kick ass at marketing. So um, this is a potential ad for an iPod where it just lists the features. They say 80 gigabytes, it's pocket sized, just like 3000 accessories that go with it. Again, pretty uninspiring. Let's take a look again at what Apple actually did. He said, say hello to iPod, 1,000 songs in your pocket. There are no features on this ad, but you are interesting because it's the benefit. It's what you can do with this product. You can put 1,000 songs in your pocket. So how do, you, how do you get from a feature to a benefit? I like to use a rule called So What? This is from one of our marketing consultants named Mo Rubenzahl. His, his website will be linked um, at the end of this presentation as well. He starts with a feature 
And he essentially just says, so what, until he gets to a benefit. So let's start with the feature lower power. So what? It uses less battery. So what? You have to charge it less often. Okay, we're almost there. So what? You can go all day without recharging. So we started with the feature lower power. We got to a benefit that says you can go all day without recharging, what you can do with that product. All right, so these are all great guidelines to help shape your story, but I'm gonna give you an actual recipe that I like to use when I'm shaping my stories. This is from an article by Andy Raskin where he breaks down a sales deck for Zora, um, and he just breaks down the slides and the recipe that they used. Um, it's called the greatest sales deck I've ever seen. It will also be linked. Um, so number one, name a big relevant change in the world. Number two, show only winners and losers. Number three, show the promised land. Number four, introduce features as magic gifts. Number five, present evidence that you can make the story come true. Surprise, I used it for my presentation. So um, I'm gonna walk through how I used it to create this story, as well as how some examples of how other people have used this recipe as well in ways that work. So number one, he says, name a big relevant change in the world. I like to call this step, why should I give a shit? You know, why should the customer care about what you're doing? So there's two options for this. One is what I did, the relevant change. I said we live in an age of digital marketing. Second option for this is name the enemy. Elon Musk is a good, good example of someone who's very good at telling the story and has had a lot of success doing so. Um, this is him presenting the power wall battery and he starts off with a slide that just shows pollution and says, this is real, this is your enemy. Number two, show that there will be winners and losers. So now you've shown that there's, there's something wrong or there's something changed. You need to show them that you can either win or lose in this scenario. You need to show them what's at stake. I showed that you can be at the top of the Google, the Google search or you cannot be. A lot of people tend to go for the doctor patient metaphor, like you're in pain, I need to make it better. You know, you're originally a loser and I'm gonna make you a winner. That's not always the case because people don't see themselves as in pain or see themselves as a loser to start off with. Most people see themselves in this positive area where they're like, I'm doing okay. They may oscillate a little bit in that I'm okay region, but most people think they're doing good. So what you need to do is show them a future that gets super awesome and a future that gets super bad. And you want to make them want that better future. I'm use another pop culture reference because I love those. Um, Council of Elrond in Lord of the Rings. Elrond did a great job of this. The first thing he says in this scene is, you've been summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor. So he names the enemy. Middle Earth stands upon the brink of destruction. No one can escape it. He names a big relevant change. He says, you will unite or you will fall. Each race is bound to this fate, this one doom. He gives you two futures. He gives you one where you will fall, where you will burn and you will die. And he gives you one where you succeed, where you save the world and everybody's happy. Which future do you want? You want the one where you're happy. That's what you want your customer to want. You want to show them two futures, maybe not as ex extreme as this, but one where they lose and one where they win and make them want the better future. It's tempting at this point to jump into your product. You're excited, they're excited, we're all excited, but we want to hold back a little bit. We want to show them instead a teaser. We want to show them Again, even more so what happens when they win. For this, I showed that uh, you can win by using storytelling. Um, Elon Musk did this even better than I did. Um, and he says, he basically goes in, again, he has not even mentioned his battery yet. He just says, he describes his version of happily ever after, a civilization powered by this handy dandy fusion reactor in the sky called the sun. So essentially he's shown this utopia in the future. He's shown the enemy's defeat. He's shown the happy thing. It may seem counterintuitive to get there before you've shown them how, but the audience knows where you're going and they will follow along. So now that they want that future, now it's time to show them your features as magic gifts for overcoming obstacles to the promised land. I gave you three rules, three rules for success. Um, Musk gave you the Powerwall battery. Steve Jobs gave you the iPhone. Number five is present the evidence you can make the story come true. And I'm purposefully leaving this out, one for time, but two, because I think the evidence is everywhere. You can look at Tesla, you can look at Apple, you can look at the Wright brothers, and you can see that their success and the way that they change their thinking to tell the stories like this. So some things to take away from this, um, obviously start with why. Remember the differences between features and benefits. Don't forget to tell your story. Make sure you're always telling your story not just when you're marketing, but throughout everything that you do when you're creating or marketing that product or service. 
And do not forget the customer is the center of the universe. Do not forget these rules. Remind yourself of these all the time. Otherwise, you'll get derailed and your story will get derailed. So in the presentation, I've linked, and this is some good homework for you guys, watch Simon Sinek's TED Talk on the Start With Why. Check out Andy Raskin on Medium. I've got a lot of references to his work in here. And check out Mo Rubens All Walk Marketing and read Twilight again. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All my contact information will be on here. And finally, thank you very much, guys. Oh, ooh. That was so good. Um, thank you. Amazing. Do you want to pop off of screen share and we'll see yeah, really our great. beautiful faces again and then Yay. hopefully take some questions from you guys. Um, so feel free to pop them in. I don't think you guys can come off mute in this webinar format um, that we have right now in Zoom, but feel free to pop any questions you might have in the chat or the question answer box. Um, but yeah, that was really, really good, Grace. And I found this Thank stuff you. super fascinating. Um, and a little anecdote, like I was just thinking about this actually because, uh, you know, like it happens all the time and I feel like or it's like just super in our worlds and we don't necessarily always see it. But like on the drive here, the guy that I was driving here is like the guy that founded this new co-working space. And he was like, and he was like, yeah, he's like, I, I'm not like a huge McDonald's fan, but like, man, they really get their customers. He's like, the customers are totally the center of the universe. Like, especially like if you, you know, in Europe at these McDonald's, how there's like the tech machine where like you can just plug stuff in and print out your receipt and hand it in and like, so yeah, like I feel like that yeah. that's an example too of like it's part of why they're still winning. Like they still just they have so much so much customer loyalty all over Europe. People just love this. Um, yeah, is definitely a good example. Yeah, they're like a weird example, but I feel like he was like so passionate about them, and I was thinking like they do do a good job. Like they get what their yeah. customers want, like simplicity, quickness, like technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not absolutely. vegetarian food. He was like, there's no vegetarian food, but French people aren't vegetarian, so like, it doesn't matter. And they just like, they're very like customer centric. They like just do what the customer wants. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, especially yeah, McDonald's and Starbucks always customize, customize their menus and their locations depending on the country. So that's, that's definitely, they know what they're doing for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two, two people that definitely know what they're doing, two companies. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody out there in webinar world that has any questions, feel free to type them into the box. Um, I'll give you all a minute. Let me ask you though, Grace, what are other like, I mean, you named a few obviously and you used like Tesla and, and Apple as like two primary examples in your talk, but what are like other, maybe even like smaller brands that like people don't know of as well or, or up and coming brands, like kind of startup -y brands that you think are really like nailing this aspect of their, of their, of building their brand? They're, they're doing it or they're ignoring it? They're doing it. Like the other examples of just people that do yeah. this well, get their customer, tell their story, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was doing the research for this, it's actually interesting to see a lot of smaller companies, a lot of startups doing this really well. So like Slack and Trello are both ones that weren't around a few years ago and have exploded. And like I use in my everyday work. So companies yeah, like that too. are definitely definitely getting it right. And it's you know you know companies are learning better. You know a few years ago this was you know Simon Sinek was like this doesn't even exist, but now companies are learning how to do this a lot better. So it's good to see that it's enabling a lot of the smaller startups to have success and to to look at the story like this. Cool. Yeah, I know like remote year in our talks about like, you know, rebranding and making like a new mission statement. We were definitely doing the Simon Sinek whole like start with why, like start with why that, why do mm -hmm. we feel like we should exist or what are, what's our main purpose for being as a company? Yeah. Everybody yeah, gets absolutely. that we're like year long travel platform, but like that's not where we should start. All right. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's the what, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Ian's asking, so people really yeah. identify with the why, then they become an extension of your marketing department. Huh? Exactly, exactly. So that's actually, um, and Simon Sinek actually talks about this in his TED talk, but it's a good thing to point out is there's the, the growth curve, which is like a, just like, it's like a little hill, you know, and it's like, there's always going to be people that get your message. There's always going to be those early adopters. It's like the first, like, fifth, like 10 to 15% will just get it, you know, they'll just be like, okay, that's what I want. They already know they have a problem, but it's getting people to identify the why that will get you past the 15% and get you up into the 60s and 70s. You gotta get over that hump first and getting people to get the why, and, that is, and then they, yeah, and then it just, it grows itself. So at that point, that's definitely an interesting point. Yeah, it's like when people wear like t-shirts and stuff of like companies that aren't t-shirt companies, and I'm like, ah, oh, you just like want to yeah. be that brand. Like you just love yeah. Ferrari or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So J-Dubs um, is asking, where did I buy this hat? No, I'm just kidding. He's asking, how would you apply this to personal branding slash storytelling, especially um, because some of us are freelance, freelancers and contractors. So I guess, yeah, how do you rope this into like your own pitch kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. And so this is, this is where I think 
the recipe is is good it's like if you're creating a website you want to have the the why at the top you want to have the benefits at the top you want to have that big change at the top because you if you have just like this is what you know i'm a writer is the first thing on your page you know anyone can find a bunch of writers again you want to start off with the you know what are you going to have in common with your customer you know what is going to make them say oh this person is going to get me a little bit more um and so this is it's a little more personal but it's still the same the same methodologies apply it's just you know what is what are we what are we gonna have in common what's my purpose that they want to hear from me so and feel free you know feel free to reach out if you've got a specific question you can ping me on slack and i'm happy to look at, look at any little things so awesome any last questions out there for all y'all okay i'm going back to Travis. <laughs> McDonald's gets its people, man. It knows what the people want. <laughs> um, cool. Well, thanks again, Grace. Um, and thank you guys for, for joining us, thank whoever's out there. Uh, I think this was incredible, and hopefully people will continue to watch it for years to come and gain you know, some wisdom from, from, your, from your knowledge that you have about the subject. So, so thank you guys, and have a lovely Wednesday. Um, go, go do some work at a McDonald's or wherever, you, or wherever it's close to you with Wi-Fi. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back here two weeks from now. Next now, <laughs> Peace. Good, thank you.